Hey everybody, today we're gonna cover a question that'll make you the most hated man on the internet. It's called, what kind of oil should I run in this thing? If you have ever been on the forums, you're gonna see people get so angry when someone asks, what kind of oil or what viscosity oil should I run in my Volkswagen? People will freak out. They will yell at you. They will put it all caps locks and tell you that you shouldn't ask this question. But so many people ask this question. So you know what we're going to do today is we're going to look through a bunch of manuals, official service manuals from Bentley and a bunch of the other manuals and see what they have to say about what kind of oil should you run in your air-cooled Volkswagen. And then we're going to look at a few of the manufacturer specs from their own websites and a very interesting thing that I found on Porsche's website with the 356 cars and the Type 4 engine that was shared with the Volkswagen bus. So let's dig into these books right now. We're going to try to answer this question once and for all. What oil should you be running in your car? Here's a good place to start. Larry Johnson, Fix Your Volkswagen. This is the very first repair manual that I ever had. I got this with a 1969 Beetle that I bought as my first car around the year 1999. And Larry has a, a lot of good general advice in this book. If you don't have one, you might want to pick it up. Let's see what he says. So he says here, just to fill the crankcase with a specified amount of engine oil labeled for service API SE. He does not even get into the subject of viscosity. He just says to use one that is uh, recommended by the API or SE rating. Now we're down to about SP rating. You'll notice every few years they change that, and the SE rating expired back in 1979. So not much help here from Mr. Johnson. Let's go to another book, the Chilton Manual. Okay, here we are. This is an old Chilton's manual that is a, one of the better of the service manuals other than the Bentley, I think. It has a lot of good technical information inside. Let's see what they have to say about oil viscosity. Here we're going to find they actually have a chart. And being that this is an older book, they didn't have a lot of multi-grade oils back then. So the chart recommended, as you can see, for anything about over 30 degrees or freezing, uh, we've got SAE 30 as a recommendation or 20W20 if it's cold and goes below freezing. I don't think you can even get that grade of oil anymore. They also recommend on the right-hand side a 10W or a 5W for really cold weather. And we're going to see that all of the books allow you to use a straight grade of motor oil. There's nothing wrong with that. If you choose to run a straight grade of motor oil, every one of the books is going to have your back on that. But these books are much older than modern information, so you don't always get the benefit in the books of having the multi-grade oils. Let's go ahead to a little bit of a more modern book, the Haynes Manual, that covers beetles from 54 to 79. This manual is still in print and is very common. It is probably one of the more general repair manuals that you'll find out there. It doesn't have a lot of the real detailed information like the Bentley Manual, but it's not too bad. So being a more modern manual, they have ditched any reference to straight grades in the Haynes manual and they recommend two different viscosities a 10W30 for warmer weather and a 5W30 for winter weather. They don't have any other recommendation listed in the manual which I thought was pretty interesting. Let's move on now to some of the more official Volkswagen information starting with the blue Bentley manual for the 1960s cars. Perhaps this is the moment you've all been waiting for, the Bentley manual. The one that I'm always talking about in my shop as being the best manual, the most accurate manual. Well, here it is, the blue Volkswagen service manual for the later 60s cars. And then we're going to look at the orange Bentley manual. And I've got to say, there's a big surprise coming because I was shocked to find the difference in the blue and orange Bentley manuals in regards to oil viscosity recommendations. Let's dig into the blue one right now. When the blue Bentley manual was made, they didn't have the multi-grade oils yet. So this is going back to the straight grades again. And they have SAE 40, SAE 30, 20W20, SAE 10, and SAE 5 as options with the different descriptions there that you can see. 
there is no mention of multigrade oils in the Blue Bentley Manual, and that, I believe, is because this manual was originally published before the advent of the multigrade oils. What I thought was interesting is they never recommended an SAE 50 in the straight grades listed here, but we're going to see something in the next two manuals that is going to cause me to have to eat my hat because I've been telling people on the internet for a while now, never use 20W50 in your air-cooled Volkswagen because Volkswagen never recommended 20W50. I've said this, I don't know how many times I've said this online, but we're going to find out right now that I was actually wrong. Here it is, the orange Bentley manual. Now this one covers cars in the 1970s. And by this time, they had moved up to recommending multi-grade oils because they were kind of new and on the market. And let's see what they have to say about the multi-grade oils, which really blew my mind. They now offer single-grade recommendations and multi-grade recommendations. You can see they continued with the SAE 40, 30, 20W20, 20, and 10 on the single grades. But on the multi-grade, 20W50, 20W40, 15W50, 15W40, 10W40, 10W30, and 5W20 are listed as recommendations. I have to eat my hat because I said nowhere did Volkswagen ever recommend anything above a 15W40 for multi-grade oil, and I was wrong. Even though I've had the Bentley manual for 25 years, I guess I never noticed that. So my apologies to anybody that I've blasted on social media saying never ever run 20W50. I guess I was wrong. So if you want to run anything from a 20W50 all the way down to a 5W20, if you live in, I don't know, somewhere like the Antarctica Science Station, that's up to you. Volkswagen allows it and has those recommendations depending on your climate. But let's look at the last manual that Volkswagen ever produced for the Mexican Beetles in 2003. I found this online. It is the sedan uh, manual that came with the Beetles in 2003. And what we find here is that they only recommended 15W40 for the Mexican beetles. Now their climate is a lot hotter than most of North America. And so if we go back to the orange Bentley, remember they, they allowed for 15W40 and even 15W50 as an option. Well, later on in Mexico, Volkswagen just narrowed it down to 15W40 for everything in Mexico. So depending on your climate, you can see that there's a lot of different options that they allow and tolerate from Volkswagen. So Porsche has some new information out there that I recently discovered. If you go to their website, they now make a proprietary Porsche oil. And for the early 356 cars and for 914s, they only recommend 20W50 for those. Now, the 356 engine is not identical to a Type 1. And even the 914 Porsches were a little bit different than the... Uh, type 4 engines in the bus and the Type 4 cars, but they're very similar, and Porsche recommends 20W50 for all purpose in the Porsche versions of those engines, which I thought was extremely interesting, and you can get this classic motor oil directly from Porsche dealers. One last thing I want to read you from the Porsche website is they say here that, quote, although modern oils are better from a technical point of view, this is not the case when it comes to classic air-cooled flat engines. For example, the low viscosity of a 0W30 oil means optimum cold start behavior, low engine resistance, and other benefits in modern engines. In a 356, however, an oil of this kind can result in leaks and increased oil consumption due to the engine's higher production tolerances and lower oil pressure during operation. Modern oils also use a highly efficient detergent dispersion agents to thoroughly clean the engine and reliably remove dirt, which can be too much of a good thing for a classic Porsche engine. It is true that additional deposits should be prevented, and oil-soluble contaminants such as soot, water, and dust should be kept suspended until they are drained off through the oil filter or removed during the next oil change, 
But at the same time, it is important that the deposits which have built up over decades are not suddenly dissolved and that seals are not corroded. Since not every classic Porsche is in everyday use, the engine also has to meet other demands. Classic vehicles are often less stationary for long periods of time and only move intermittently and for short journeys, which means that condensation can form in the oil if the engine does not heat up fully. I'm going to inject here, run your thermostat, but that's maybe for another video. Anyway, let's get back to it. It says aggressive combustion residues can cause acidification of the oil fill, resulting in the corrosion of engine components. The alloys, metals, and sealing materials which were used at the time are a particular risk. Porsche therefore paid particular attention to this aspect when developing its Porsche Classic motor oil. The special formulation incorporates a high alkaline reserve which neutralizes any acids that may form. Additional corrosion inhibitors also protect vulnerable components even during longer stationary periods. And this says it's for the 356, 914, and early 911 engine. So take all that information uh, and apply that to your question of how are you going to pick the correct motor oil. I'll just throw in a picture of myself here with my BMW motorcycle. This is a 1980 R80 slash 7 bike. Very similar in design to an air-cooled Volkswagen. And in BMW's literature, they also recommend 20W50 for these bikes and 15W40 uh, for colder temperatures, which I thought was pretty interesting. But now let's move on from viscosity into uh, synthetic versus conventional oil and Gene Berg, because this is brought up a lot on the internet. This is taken directly from Gene Berg's website. If you're not familiar with Gene Berg, he was a Volkswagen air-cooled enthusiast and racer and engine builder. He's probably considered one of the greatest lights in air-cooled Volkswagenry, if you could put it that way. Well, anyhow, he never recommended the use of any synthetic oils in the air-cooled Volkswagen engine. And at the time, this is many years ago, he had tested uh, synthetic engine oils and found that they were not soaking up the heat from the head and carrying it back to the oil cooler well. Uh, the synthetic oils were kind of rejecting the absorption of heat in his tests. And so he said the uh, head temps will actually go up even though the oil temperature is going down. And he promised that they were going to look at new synthetic oils, but Gene Berg passed away, and I don't think they've ever really followed up on this testing. But a lot of people, including myself over the years, have relied on Gene Berg's um, estimation of the synthetic oil to not use it. And I've been running conventional oil for many years in my air-cooled Volkswagen. I wanted some more information on this, so I reached out to the Speed Diagnostics channel on YouTube. They have some kind of a relation with Total Seal Piston Rings, and they do oil analysis, and they have a guy on there who is um, an oil specialist, technician, kind of a science dude, can tell you just about everything you want to know about different engine oils. And so I thought, wow, this guy might be uh, the kind of person that I'd want to reach out to to follow up on Gene Berg's research. And so he had a um, a good video that he had put on, and I went into the comment section there and asked him directly about this question of synthetic oils not absorbing the heat that Gene Berg had experienced those years ago. And you'll see here that I asked him directly in the 90s, Porsche and VW builders had recommended conventional oil against synthetics in air-cooled stuff because there was a claim that synthetic oil didn't absorb heat as well as conventional oil and therefore the engines would run hotter on synthetic oil since the oil wasn't carrying away the heat to the oil cooler. Asked him what his thoughts were about this. And I'll just read you what exactly what he said. He said, thanks for the comment and the question. In regards to that question, synthetic oil has greater specific heat capacity than conventional oil. So synthetic oil actually pulls more heat from parts than conventional oils. This manifests itself in an odd way. Synthetics will run cooler than conventional oils, everything else being equal. That probably created the confusion which led to the incorrect conclusion that synthetics were not absorbing the heat. In actuality, they just didn't hold as much heat. Now, Gene Berg didn't say that the um, oil wasn't running hot enough or whatever. He said that the head temperature actually went up while the oil temperature went down because it wasn't absorbing heat. But this guy says that it actually is going to pull more heat from the part. So, got some conflicting opinions there. Uh, unfortunately, Gene Berg 
has been gone for a long time and maybe this is now true of the modern oils maybe the modern synthetic oils do pull more heat than conventional oils i'm going to go by what this guy's saying um, and take that with a grain of salt you can also do the same decide if you want to run conventional or synthetic i'm going to be doing some tests for myself with my buggy which is kind of a engine that i'm not too worried about if something bad happens but i'm going to run some mobile one 15 w50 synthetic engine oil in that and see how it performs and maybe just do some easy basic temperature tests along the way so now i want to look at some specific uh, motor oils themselves in the question of zddp or zinc content because the air-cooled volkswagen has a flat tap it cam and it requires zinc in the oil So here's a picture from the webcam website, Web86 cam. I run one of these before and I really liked it in a 1776. But anyhow, we have to make sure that our engines have enough ZDDP or zinc phosphorus content in the motor oil because it's a flat tap at cam. And if you look at most modern oils, they don't have ZDDP anymore or they have very low amounts of ZDDP because of emissions regulations. If you remember the first book we looked at, How to Fix Your Volkswagen, it recommended an API SE grade engine oil, and that was discontinued in 1979. Um, that had a much higher zinc content than modern oils. I believe we're down towards SP now as the time of this video, and in an SP designation, there's almost no zinc, and that is going to be a problem and is going to cause increased wear on the cam lobes with the flat tap at cam. So I went and reached out to a couple of companies, Castrol and Mobile, and just asked them about content, zinc content, in their oils. And this is what I got back on email. This is not an endorsement of any of these oils, but this is just what they wrote back. I asked them about zinc content in 15W40 Castrol GTX diesel oil with the CK4 designation, because I was thinking about running 1540 in the summertime here in my buggy. And I wanted to know about the zinc. And it comes to find out that the Castrol G GTX diesel oil has plenty of zinc content for an air-cooled Volkswagen engine, as you can see here. It has an average content of about 1,200 parts per million of zinc. And we're looking for really anything up around the 1,000 ppm or higher. So the Castrol GTX was just fine. And just for the heck of it, I decided to contact Mobile One about their oil. Since we talked about uh, conventional and synthetic oils, I thought, well, I'll just get one of each. So Mobile One with the 15W50, which I never would have recommended anybody run before, but the Bentley manual ended up allowing it, I thought it might be worthwhile to check the zinc content. Most of the modern synthetic oils don't have much zinc content in them, but if you look at Mobile One 15W50 in the chart here, you can see that the nominal level of zinc is 1,200 parts per million, just like the conventional Castrol GTX diesel oil. So this is an example of a synthetic that does have plenty of zinc content for our flat tappet cams. Now, we're not going to look at every manufacturer of oil and every viscosity, but if you have one that you like to use, make sure you reach out to the company and ask them about the zinc content and I'm sure they'll be happy to let you know. So after all that, did we really answer the question? I hope we at least took some of the confusion away, but th there's no single answer to what oil should you be running in your air-cooled Volkswagen. It depends on your climate. It depends on how you drive it. It depends on uh, a multitude of other factors, but hopefully it's given you enough information in a 20-minute video about engine oil to figure out exactly what you're going to want to be running where you live. For me here in Maine, I've decided I'm going to be running the 15W50 Mobile One as a test, and I'll report back as to what I find out in my buggy engine running 1550 Mobile One. And I'd like to hear from you about any experiences you've had with any of these types of oils and what you've chosen to run down in the comments. Now, you may choose to run a straight grade. You may choose to run a multi-grade. But whatever you do, go back through this video and through these books and use the information to the best of your ability to choose the oil that suits your location. 
And again, thank you for watching. I hope this has been valuable information to you and hopefully makes you and myself a little less dogmatic about engine oil choices because as I found out, there's a lot more options out there than the limited amount that I've been recommending to people. So have a great day. Thanks for watching as always. Share these videos, like, and subscribe. And tell me in the comments what you want to hear about next.